Hello, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Jennifer Broom. Well, she has worked in sports, TV, and even in film. She is currently a national correspondent for Inside Edition. And now she is adding author to her long list of achievements. Here with her new book, Faith in the Spotlight, is Megan Alexander. Megan, welcome hey. to Houston Life. Thank yeah. you so much for having me, guys. Good to see you. Yeah, I was going to let everybody at home know we know each other from our San Antonio days. I love that. So you're sort of like a local Texan, but these days you split your time between Nashville, a New York City. New York City, but Texas forever, let's Texas be honest. Texas forever. Yes, absolutely. And you're a mom, you have two kids, yes. you have a husband who's here with us today. Tell us about the new book. Yeah, well, thank you guys for having me. It's been my passion to write this book for a while now. Been in the business, like Jennifer and like you, Derek, for many, many years. Always thought I wanted to get into this business. And a couple of years ago, I just was walking in the bookstore and noticed there really wasn't a book for the young, ambitious, working woman of faith. We have a lot for guys. We have a lot of great secular books, so many wonderful books. But for the working woman of faith, and it kind of crystallized that I needed to do this. I got an email from a pastor in Seattle a few years ago. and he Which said, is where you grew up. Which is where I grew up. And he said, Megan, I have a church full of young, ambitious women of faith. They have big career goals and dreams, but they're worried they're going to need to compromise to get that corner office yeah. or to climb the ladder. I don't know of many people, especially in entertainment, but I know of you. Will you come speak to us? And I said, I'd love to come speak to you, and I'm going to write this book. And you know, I have to say, one of my favorite passages in the entire book comes from your mom. Aww. And it talks about how just, I mean, the entertainment industry, or I really think any kind of industry, it's not just a sprint to the finish, and it's constantly a marathon. And the advice she gives, if you have children who want to pursue big careers and dreams, my advice is that the entertainment field is like a never-ending marathon. You think you are crossing the finish line, and another 26 miles appears to test your faith. Paul encouraged us in 2 Timothy 4, 7, with his example, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. Yeah. You know, and I just, yeah. I just, I love that. I also, Peyton Manning, when he retired, he used that example exact same scripture. Are you surprised that you're starting to see more and more that faith is becoming much more mainstream in movies, TV? You know, I think the success of the faith films has certainly helped. God's Not Dead, the Bible series, Roma Downey and Mark Romet yeah. are role models of mine, and they wrote a foreword in the book too. So I think people are beginning to talk about it more and more. I just want to encourage people to, whatever you're passionate about, just be bold and be fearless and being true to yourself. And if that is faith, then talk about it. There is ways you can thrive in your career and still stay true to yourself and your faith and incorporate it into life. It's not a one-size-fits-all. Every day is different. But it's my hope that the book is a practical guide to, okay, okay, let's talk about real life situations and how this can work. Do you think attitudes within church, you know, and this could be any religion, do you think that they're sort of evolving and changing? Because we spoke before the show, I was raised in a very conservative Mormon household in a very conservative community. Mm -hmm. And back in the 80s, if a woman had a career, mm -hmm. or really if she had a voice, mm -hmm. it was actually really looked down on. So, uh, so have you found that within your own church and within your own circles that there is this movement of female female empowerment? Sure. Well, being in New York City, you definitely feel it. And I have a great church in New York City when I'm there. Other parts of the country, I think we're, we're hearing more and more about it. Derek, I think this is the great conversation for millennials right now, where so many of these women have big career goals and dreams. They're not even thinking about getting married. They want to go after those goals. And for me, you know, I was too busy chasing my career in my 20s to chase boys. So yes, I don't, I don't often think there's been a place in the church for the unapologetically ambitious woman of faith. That's my hope is that we can open up that conversation because I want young people yeah. to know, do what's right for you. And if you're all in for a career, go for it. That's we were great. just seeing some pictures of you with J.J. Watt. Uh, oh, yeah. You, you have covered everything from Super Bowls to the red carpet. Love Who him. do you look to? Which And it's one of the things you do talk about in your book, the importance of, of mentors and yes. being a mentor. Who do you look towards to, as your mentor to help us, you know, the rest of us? Sure. Find somebody out there just to talk to. Sure. Well, I think in college, I assumed one day that the mentor would be someone I do coffee with once a week and pour out my heart. and They give me great advice. When you're busy and you're in the working world, that's not necessarily necessarily going to happen. I try to be intentional with my time. If I get five minutes with Deborah Norville backstage before the show, try to make the most of that conversation. So mentors for me, I may not even see them for a year, but I'll try to email with folks, get their advice. I have my small group of friends and people I admire from afar, like writer Brene Brown, love her books. Um, different people in the book, you know, sports role models from afar, like a Russell Wilson, where I see them staying true to the faith, whether they win the Super Bowl or the next year lose the Super yeah. Bowl, his message is consistent. So I talk about casual mentors, personal mentors, professional mentors. I think we can kind of piecemeal it together if we really try and we're flexible about it. How do you do this with a family? You've got two small boys, yeah. a husband, 
How do you balance it all? Throw that word balance out the window. <laughs> oh. Throw that word this balance out the window. This is such a great photo. And your boys are now one and five? Boys are one and five. My husband, Brian, is my teammate and a huge key to my success. I think, though, women, we need to throw balance out the window and do what's right for us. I have to travel for work. My hubby is often at home with the little boys. We actually, it, true story, I was interviewing Beyonce a couple years ago at the Super Bowl, and my husband was changing diapers at home. Oh. <laughs> then that can sometimes be your life. Yeah. Do what's right for you. Some days I'm all work, and then some days I'm all family. I do not have it balanced. It's an ongoing journey, but you need to decide what's right for you and your family, and it is okay if you want to go after a career. You can still figure it out. One thing that really struck me about the book, because we have copies of the book, we had a chance to look through it over the weekend. <laughs> and I, yeah, yeah exactly. Hey, look at all of Jennifer's <laughs> marks there. I marked that. out. <laughs> the, I feel like even for folks out there who are not religious at all, yeah. or you know, complete atheists. There are messages in your book that I think really transcend religion. And, and one of my takeaways from the passages I read were that female empowerment, you know, that you share a story about negotiating a contract, a producer tries to lowball you and offers you less than you were initially promised. Right. And you stuck to your guns. Yeah. And so even if someone is not religious at all, is there something they can take away from your book? Absolutely. Nothing beats hard work, hustle, determination. And yeah, I included the negotiating chapter because I gave a speech at Penn State and afterwards at the, the women in women in business conference and afterwards I took questions and all the ladies wanted to talk about negotiating and asking for a raise and getting a promotion. I thought we need to talk about this as women. We're told that sometimes we don't ask and I want to say ladies ask for it. Worst that can happen is they're going to say no, but let's talk about what it means if you have an agent or if you don't have an agent. I went through two years where I negotiated contracts without an agent and learned so much about myself. So yes, lots of practical advice that it can, can apply to anyone, regardless of if you have faith or not. I Absolutely. love that one of the lines in the book is that God wants us to hustle. Absolutely. <laughs> I think he does. Yes. So let's talk about how Tiger Woods almost made you quit. Yeah. Oh yeah. This I think is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we all have those things that we're not crazy about that we have to do for our job. Everyone has that. Whether you're a lawyer arguing for a client, maybe you don't feel, you know, you agree with his position on something, or a doctor that loses a patient. Those dark moments where you're just not crazy about your job. And for me, it was covering the Tiger Woods scandal when that whole scandal broke and we were combing through every detail and every mistress and interviewing all of them. And I'm watching this family crumble before my eyes and it just kind of got me. And I thought, oh, this is rough. In those moments, you got to remember you're there to do a job, mm -hmm. deliver for your boss, and maybe you're there for a reason. Maybe it's those behind the scenes conversations and just trying to edify the conversation with your photographer and, you know, sort of debrief and talk your way through it and find a good group of friends that you can debrief with. Again, we all go through those yeah. in our careers, but I, I don't think, you know, you just say no. I think you're supposed to be there and figure it out. And let's be honest, I shouldn't be in the business, right? If, right. I, if I don't cover those types of stories. I mean, that's life. That, that is life. So speaking of battles, you and your husband waited to have sex till you got married, right. abstinence. How did you do it? And what advice do you give to you know, the teens and the preteens now? Sure. Well, again, raised in a Christian household where I made that decision in high school. And something that was profound for me was in my high school, a young couple that were alumni of my high school that were dating, they came back and one evening held an event where they just had really frank honest conversation with my junior class. We were all juniors. And I remember a lot of people being very uncomfortable. They talked about boundaries. They talked about being putting high value on yourself, yeah. dating, marriage. I really enjoyed it. Yes, it was uncomfortable, but if we don't talk about these types of things, how are we going to figure it out? And then for me, I had such career goals and dreams that I really wanted to go after those. And I knew for me, that's, that was my priority in my 20s. And I wanted to find somebody that agreed with me on that. I think marriage is hard enough in this world, and if waiting is one more way we can fortify our marriage, why not give it a try? And then when it was time for my husband and I to speak out about it, we kind of never thought we would go public with this. I mean, who does? Uh, you went public on a magazine cover. <laughs> exactly. But I'll tell you what, I got a phone call from my pastor in New York, and she said this Christian women's magazine wants to do a story on someone in the entertainment industry that believes in abstinence. I'm having a hard time finding anybody. Would you want You're to like, share your uh. story? And the hubby and I said, if it encourages one person, it's worth it, S simply because young people are faced with so much so pressure much. nowadays to just jump in physically. I want them to know that there is a lot to life, and I want you to value yourself, and it is perfectly okay if you want to take your time and wait. It worked for me. It can work for you, too. You're a smart woman. Focus on the career. 
Yeah. Skip the boys, at least for now. <laughs> Listen, we're, we're, we're almost out of time. That Until my, it's the right boy. Yeah. Exactly. My mom gave me the same advice. <laughs> um, I want to know a little bit about what's next for you, but I also want to, we steer away from politics in this show, but I want to ask you, you're a strong, powerful woman, right? Um, the fact that women still make less money than men yeah. in the career field. You know, again, your book is a lot about empowerment. Yeah. We have a long way to go still. Yep, we do. <laughs> and we need to get women to be in those key top positions so that they are the ones hiring and setting the, the salaries makers. and taking a look at that spreadsheet and going, okay, are we equal here? So I, I want to encourage the girls to get in there and, and work hard because I think that will help us by talking about it and getting women into strong, powerful positions. I love that, like, in this book, you have so many takeaways. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, that it's something for girls, boys, you know, it doesn't matter what age, men, women, uh, that you have, every single chapter has a takeaway. So as you're going, what's next for you? What's, you know, I know you're still doing Inside Edition. Yeah. Doing the book. When are you going to just go home and take lady doesn't have enough keeping her <laughs> like, busy. When is that What time? is next? <laughs> what else can you do? I think we're all hustling in life, aren't yeah. we? We're all trying to do our very best. We got a lot going on. Everybody's juggling. So for me, I'm excited to just go be with my boys. I haven't seen them in a couple of days now and hang out with them and then professionally there's a movie coming out this spring called heartbeats oh, that's right wait this is the one you went to india for yes okay. went to mumbai india to film this uh film my role in this movie it's called heartbeats dwayne adler is the director he also wrote the screenplay for step up with channing tatum yeah. it's gonna be a cool film so oh. heartbeats be on the lookout awesome. for that movie that Can't was a great experience it. in the meantime get this book this would Thank be i think you. a fantastic going into the holiday season a fantastic Thank stocking you. stuff for a fantastic gift for someone uh faith in the spotlight you can check out megan's website Meganalexander.com.